Oli Berman's success in Saudi Arabia has been praised all over the world. What a debut, what a talent, what a performance. And all of that is 100% correct. He was amazing on very short notice. But despite all of that, the one person behind that success is Fred Vesser. What people should actually talk about is what a transformation. Ever since he took over as team principal at Ferrari, they have turned things around and taken a very good leap forward. They seem united, they have a clear goal in mind, to catch and pass Red Bull, and everything looks under control. They are closer to Red Bull than anyone else, and they have left McLaren and Mercedes behind them, from what we can see after two races. When Vasseur came in, everything was in chaos mode, and all the different departments were clearly not working together as one unit. This was very clear from every race in 2022 under Binotto. If you fast forward one full year and a winter, Ferrari is looking much, much better, both on track and off track. Without that clarity, and everyone working together, there is no way a rookie can come in and perform like that under the massive pressure of the Ferrari brand. Oliver Behrman is a really good young driver, but within Formula 2 standards, he is just another driver. Bestie, Porcher, Drogovic, Lawson, Iwasa, Dohan, Martins are just a few names that have proven themselves in Formula 2 and outperformed Behrman consistently. And let's not forget that F2 is a spec series. Everyone has the same car to begin with. So when the fans go crazy and basically demand a seat for Behrman in 2025 after his Jeddah performance, like he is the next Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton or something, it's important to take a step back and slow down. He's really good, yes, there are other drivers as well. Look at what happened to Nick de Vries after one good result in Monza. That pressure destroyed his F1 career. Let's instead talk about how Ferrari helped Behrman in every aspect. Coming into the race with a rookie, they had to eliminate as many things as possible that a veteran F1 driver has to think about. Engine cooling was made easier because Ferrari opened up the flaps for increased cooling so that Behrman could just drive normally without as much management. This was one of the main reasons for why he struggled with overtaking Sonoda and Hülkenberg despite the Ferrari being way faster than the RB and the Haas. The increased drag in a straight line made it harder to overtake, but in turn, it made it easier to race. Starting the race, Behrman was one out of two drivers on the soft tire, with Bottas being the other one further back, and that meant increased grip at the start and better control of the car in the most chaotic part of the race. Everyone else was on mediums. The two main reasons for this is to avoid contact with other cars at the start because of the better grip, but also to reduce risk of being in traffic later. When you start on the soft tire with full fuel, you kill the tire much faster. So Behrman was on a strategy where he would be one of the first drivers to pit, come out on fresh tires behind the pack and just drive alone in clean air, chasing a set target lap time. When the other cars pit later, he would naturally take back his position no risk whatsoever to anyone. If everything worked out, he would have finished P9 and that would have been a very good result as well. No car damage for the cost cap, no risk to the driver at a very dangerous circuit, and no risk for the team. He finished P7 because Norris and Hamilton took a big risk staying out under the safety car, and it backfired on them. If both of them would have pitted under the safety car, they would have finished ahead of Behrman. Ferrari also made sure that Behrman's car had more downforce to help him stay on track and take care of the tire management better. Without increased downforce, he would slide a lot more and kill his tires, which would have made it easier for Norris and Hamilton to catch him near the end and overtake him. The increased downforce also helped them with the overtakes, diving Sonoda and letting the bigger arrow help him slow the car down. Now the race played out differently than what Ferrari had originally planned, with the safety car and the earlier pit stops, but the original plan was very good and safe for all parties involved. The main point about this is that I don't think Ferrari could do this under Binotto's management. Things would have been way more chaotic. Under Fred Vasseur's leadership, Ferrari are looking strong again. So when you look back at Behrman's performance and you rightfully praise him, remember all the help given to him by a Ferrari that is once again on point. Do you agree with my take on this topic? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.